Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Lucinda Vakura, Senior Director of Business Development and Marketing with Alpha Group. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Year End Giving Reach the Next uh, Level in Fundraising Results. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I am wearing um, a button up striped shirt. I have short brown hair and I'm wearing glasses today. Uh, before we dive into the presentation, I want to go through our land acknowledgement and tell you a little bit about Alfred Group and some webinar housekeeping items, and then I will hand it off to today's uh, presenters. So um, Alfred Group, uh, we have offices and consultants across the country, but our headquarters is in Chicago. So I want to read the land acknowledgement for Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Chicago is located on the traditional unceded homelands of the Council of the Three Fires the Ojibwa, Ottawa, and Potawatomi nations. Many other tribes, such as the, the Miami, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Sac, and Fox, also called this area home. The region has long been a center for indigenous people to gather, trade, and maintain kinship ties. Um, a little bit about Alfred Group. Uh, I realize many of you are very familiar with who we are and what we do, but for anybody who may not be, Alfred Group is a national full service consultancy serving the nonprofit community. We offer six flagship services seen here on the screen. They include fundraising, strategic planning, leadership development, interim staffing, data management and analytics, as well as diversity, equity, inclusion services. Um, we are a proud member of the Giving Institute. We are a women's business enterprise and um, a sponsor and partner with AFP, the Association of Fundraising Professionals. So more information about who we are and what we do at Alford.com. Um, just a couple of really quick housekeeping items before we, we launch in. Uh, our webinar today is being recorded and you'll receive a um, copy of that recording within 24 hours of today's event. You'll receive an email from Alford Group with that information. Uh, that email will also include a survey. So in that email, but also immediately after the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a very short survey. It's only four questions. Please consider uh, completing it. It will be very helpful to us to tell us how we did today. Uh, everyone uh, for the next hour for our webinar will be in listen-only mode. However, we are taking questions and we do want this to be interactive. So the chat is open, please chat. We want this to be dynamic and interactive. We want to answer your questions. To ask a question, though, please, instead of using the chat, to use the Q&A function. There's a Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen if you mouse over the navigation bar. And that's where you can ask a question, and that will go to the speakers. And we will be answering questions throughout the webinar and also save time at the end for um, a formal Q&A as needed. And then finally, um, please join us on Twitter. Uh, we'll be live tweeting about uh, today's event, and we hope that you join the conversation there as well. So with that, I am excited to turn things over to our speakers. Uh, Mary Hackett, our vice president uh, at Alfred Group, is going to be kicking us off, and we'll walk through the agenda and um, the rest of today's presentation. Thank you, Mary and Alexis. Thanks, Lucinda. Hi, Alexis. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Mary. Hi. Hello. And hello to everybody out there. We, Alexis and I are so excited um, to chat with you about year end because as you're going to learn through our presentation today, year end is huge and we all need to maximize all of our efforts and all of the things so we can raise the money for the missions, the amazing missions out there that you are all working for. So for today's agenda, we're going to go through some introductions. Um, we want to Ooh, let me, here we go. Uh, we want to talk about some ground rules and uh, we want to do some quick polls because we want to know what, what's happening with you all so that we can give you the best advice possible. Uh, we want to talk about the importance of year end and because we care about your sanity, we want to talk to you about how to have a stress-free year end. Now I know it's very stressful, but there's things you can do today that will help you over the next 10 to 12 weeks. Um, so we're going to cover all that amazing stuff. But first, we should tell you who we are. So my name is Mary Hackett. My pronouns are she and her. 
I have uh, medium length brown hair and I'm wearing a plaid dress. And I'm coming to you from beautiful Oregon. I live in Bend, Oregon. And I've been fundraising for 25 years now. And half of that time was as a major gift officer and an annual giving officer. And the other half of that time was in fundraising operations. So I really know both sides of the house. Um, so my, my specialty with Alpha Group is my fundraising operations. So I'm gonna put that hat on today as we talk all things back of the house to set you up for success uh, for year end. Thanks, Mary. Um, my name is Alexis Cook. My pronouns are she and her. I'm currently working from my home office in Evanston, Illinois. It's been a bit dreary and rainy, uh, but the sun tried to come through a little while ago. I'm wearing plaid flannel because I'm constantly cold and I have fairly long blonde hair. I have been working for nonprofits for over 18 years. Um, prior to joining Alfred Group, I worked and supported nonprofits predominantly in the Chicago area. And throughout my career, I led development and marketing teams, managing many, many, many year-end processes and frontline fundraising efforts. So I'm thrilled to be with you all today, and thank you for joining us. So as Alexis and I were preparing for today, we we decided we we want to hear from you. We we hope that this the chat is on fire the entire time we're presenting today. Uh, because we want to make this more of a conversation. We want to answer all of your burning questions. And we we even want to know like that you're here and where you're where you're coming, where you are right now. So if you want to just let us say hi, drop a little line in the chat, let us know where you live and what what organization you're representing. We would love to um, to converse with you through this hour. And Alexis is going to be watching that chat like a hawk. So if any burning questions come up, we are here, we are here to answer them. Okay, so uh, if you have actual questions, though, um, we we want to see those in the uh, the Q and A section. So that helps us kind of instead of like this long chat, we we can see the, the the burning questions right away. So we want you to ask them. You don't have to wait till the end of this presentation. Go ahead and let us know what you're thinking, um, so we can address it in real time. And also, we want to let's shut down our email. Let's shut down our teams. Let's really honor the hour that we have together. So in a few minutes, we're really gonna talk about how big year end is. And this is an hour that is meant to help you have the best year end yet for your organization. So let's peel back all the distractions and really focus for the next hour on your year end efforts. And we have some amazing, amazing web other webinars coming up. So every fall we do a, a four part webinar series and our dear colleagues at Alpha Group, the next one coming up is November 1st. It's about strength-based messaging. Um, this, this is really critical. You know, DEI efforts are woven into the fabric at Alpha Group. And as we counsel clients, we've noticed that um, a lot of people are changing their language. And so we wanna, we wanna talk about the, the clients and the people or the animals or the, the oceans and all that good stuff. We wanna talk about them from a place of strength, not a place of weakness. So if you wanna learn how to do that in an amazing way, this is a great webinar. Also cryptocurrency is hot right now. So we, have a, uh, we are gonna demystify all things crypto. Um, and so that's on November 15th. And then our final is capital campaigns. So if you wanna know the tips, the tricks, if you're new to fundraising, or if you've been in fundraising a while, we're gonna tell you what is happening, what's current, and all things capital campaign. So make sure to register for any upcoming webinars. Okay, Alexis and I, as we jump off here, we're gonna make a bold promise to you, actually four, four promises. So the first is at, after today, after our webinar, we you're gonna know how significant uh, year end is in the US, which spoiler alert, it's a big deal. Um, we're going to talk to you about how to prepare for year end. We're going to give you all of our best tips and tricks to increase revenue. And then we want to talk to you about how to actually measure and uh, be successful in your year end efforts. So what that looks like as well. So is everybody ready? I see chats are flowing in, which we love. So keep them coming. Okay, we're just going to start with a handful of questions here.
Okay. How much, and you can just, you can put it in the chat. How much of your overall revenue comes in the last two months of the year uh, or your year end efforts? Do you think it's 10 to 24%, a little higher, maybe a quarter to half? Do you think it's more than half or are you just not sure? And Alexis, when you, in your fundraising days, where did you land? That's a great question. It depended on the organization, but I'd say broadly between 25 and 49%. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check in the chat. Yeah, so such a variety of responses. I'm okay. seeing a lot of 10 to 24%, a lot of 50%. Okay. And less than 10%. Okay. Somebody's new to their org, so they're about to find out. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> That's Tina. Tina's out there. She's new. Okay. Oh, there's some other new people. Oh, oh great. Okay. Well, great. You're new to your organization. Still relevant. We're, we're going to talk more about this. So that's good to know. So it looks like the majority, Alexis Wright, are coming in about 25 to 49%. 25 to 49%. It's huge. So the next two months are a big deal. Okay. Next question. Uh, we want to know what database you're using. Um, I feel like Alexis and, and I have. Oh, oh here. Oh, Lucinda. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. It's working. It's great. <laughs> okay. Now we can actually do a poll. So um, if you would let us know what database you're using. And then our next question is uh, when do you start? When do you normally start planning your year end efforts? Okay, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. I don't know about you, Alexis. I've, I think I've used all of those databases. <laughs> Mary, I'm sure you. I'm sure you have. I'm a little more familiar with Razor Edge and Salesforce. And there's a third question if you have if you have your poll up, which is just just to see if you are managing your year end with external partners, um, or if this will be largely internally driven. Okay. Oh, Karen's in all true. That's a good one. Jody Salesforce. Okay. And Tina, that's great. Started this month. We love it. Okay. We're just going to give another second. And Lucinda, when we're ready, go ahead and show us our results. Okay. So we've got. Uh, our biggies are uh, Razor's Edge or eTapestry and Salesforce, or I'm sorry, not Salesforce, other, um, but we've got, we've got nice mix here. Okay, let's talk about when do you start planning? Okay, so the majority are, have started planning. Alexis, we have a proactive group here. Uh, and then some people are starting today, which is still, that's okay. That's why you're here. And that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, and then how do you manage your, your year end or do you manage your year end with external partners? So it looks like we're about half and half and uh, we have some new people, so they just don't know. Okay, that is lovely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the poll and we'll, we'll kind of slip through these slides. Okay, at the end of the day, <laughs> as we've just talked about, you know, year end, it is busy and I mean, not for all nonprofits, but for most nonprofits. And this, this is kind of what happens at year end. It just, things just start to pile up, right? It's a short amount of period, it's a short time period, a lot of things to do, and it just gets busy. So you've got, you've got your, you know, one or two direct mail pieces. Uh, I always recommend doing a double drop if that's something you're into. You've got follow-up appeals. You've got um, your libunts and cybunts. And, you know, libunt is last year, but unfortunately not this. Uh, your cybunt is some year, but unfortunately not this year. So you want to you want to bring back any lap donors. You want to look at your year-end giving pages and make sure that everything is is up to snuff. Um, you know, you're teeing up your social media channels. You're activating your ambassadors out in the social media world. 
you're just launching campaigns. You're doing all of the things, uh, which is great. It's also really busy. <laughs> so we want to give you our tips and tricks today to help you manage all of the things. So lots of gifts are coming in. Um, and everything is like heightened, right? The last 10 weeks of the year, you've got more visits. You're sending out more mail, which means more gifts in the door. You've got all your gift entry, uh, acknowledgement letters to send out. You've got thank you calls. You've got all these things. But at the end of the day, it really is the best problem ever. I mean, I don't know about you, Alexis. I would, I would like, <laughs> I would wait for the mailman. He would be like, okay, here you go, Mary. Like I'm just waiting to see what checks come in um, every day for the last like six weeks of the year. Um, yeah, it's a thing. So it's a thing. Yeah. And it's really hard, right? Like, darn it. We have so many gifts to enter. Like it's really the best problem ever. We have so many people to thank. Um, so we really try to have the mindset of, yes, it's a lot, but it's worth it. And it's when people give and, and people are habitual. And so we want to honor that as well. But let's, let's talk about some stats. Really talk about how big year end is for many nonprofits. Now, these stats came from um, uh, Blackbot's giving report. And so charities receive 41% of their annual contribution in the last few weeks of the year. So a lot of people on this call who said 25 to 49%, you are right along with what a lot, the national average is. Uh, you know, that's, that's almost half of your annual giving revenue is going to come in in the last two months. Now, now, three out of four donors say that their primary reason for giving at year end is that they are grateful. So there's a theme of thankfulness, and that helps us understand what messages to put out to donors. When we realize how they're, you know, why they're giving, we can kind of talk to them about why we're giving. Also, thirty-one percent comes in in December. Alexis, bananas. <laughs> bananas. I know. <laughs> I know. That is such a volume. It's volume. It's volume. And then 12% of that uh, comes in the last three days of the year. So the last three days, they are busy, but they're so joyful. Um, and it's, it's exciting and it's lovely. And then 60% of nonprofits, so two out of three, they're really working to have one to three donor like moves in these last two months. So not only are we just like mailing and, and you know, text to give and online pages and social media, but we're also, we're also trying to further relationships too. And so we really need to balance like the solicitations with the stewardship and the cultivation and all those good things. Oh, thanks, Anne. We think they're valuable too. Hey, Mary. Yeah. We, we, we have a question just to, to throw it at you before we, before we keep going. What is a double drop? A double, that's such a good question. So a double drop. So if you send a mailing out, let's say you send a mailing out the second week of November, maybe by December 1st, you see who hasn't given to that mailing and you mail them a second time with maybe a slightly different message urging them to give before year end. Yeah, great question. I'm all about the double drops. Okay, so this short list represents key steps to preparing for and launching your year end, which we, Alfred Group, Mary, and myself believe will aid your ability to manage a stress-free process. We're gonna dive into each of these with, um, we'll, we'll dive a little deeper into each of these in just a second, but we wanna recognize that it may not be a comprehensive list for your organization, and please know it's not actually meant to be a to-do list that you complete in order. Many items will occur simultaneously. So how to get ready for a stress-free year end. First, on a planner, create that strategy and timeline and be sure that you have meetings scheduled out with any core internal collaborators because as the year gets busy, you wanna make sure you're holding that time. Identify engagement opportunities, and this is often with your frontline fundraising team, um, but map out those donor funder prospect cultivation, solicitation, and stewardship moments that you know of. Maybe they're events, programs, 
special um, special webinars. Just make sure that you're you're mapping those out on the same timeline as your year end appeal and your other big efforts. You want to make sure you've lined up and confirmed all internal and external partners and volunteers. When do you need senior leadership members to to participate? Will your board um, if you have a development committee or board members or a really active board chair, you just want to make sure you've thought about their role and you're lining um, up their participation. We also want to be sure that all processes have been revisited, prepared, and outlined. Um, inclusive but not limited to gift entry, coding, acknowledgement generation, the signature process, reporting, etc. We want to define audiences and identify segmentation for your appeals, your communication strategies, and your stewardship efforts. We want to make sure that all messaging is aligned with organizational priorities and that you have a, um, you've mapped out the process for developing that communication strategy because it is, ult it is um, very often multi-layered. And you want to be sure that you have the deadlines in place for designing collateral, preparing materials, updating the website, don't forget to order materials and postage in advance. And then of course, the implementation, the actual go time. So let's start with talking about creating our year end strategy and timeline. Alexis, we actually have some questions, burning questions. Oh, yes. Okay, was there any significant change in year end giving patterns after the 2017 tax bill? Okay, I, I actually am familiar with this tax bill. <laughs> So I'll just, I'll just chime in. Alexis will offer color commentary. Um, so Andy, it, this is a great question. So back in 2017, they increased the standard deduction. So let's say, let's say I made a $10,000 gift, or you know what, let's say I made a $5,000 gift to, I'm going to pick somebody here to the Akron Canton Food Bank. And I, I would want to claim that five thousand dollars, right, on my uh, my taxes. However, they increase the standard deduction up to ten. I think it's ten thousand now, or or maybe it's eight thousand. So even though I gave this amazing five thousand dollar gift, I still can like put that to the side and claim a larger amount just as a standard deduction. Um, so Andy, I I don't know. Um, these stats came from the 2021 giving report, uh, or I'm sorry, the by Blackbaud. So I probably could go back and look to see how things have changed since 2017. Um, so I'm going to follow up with you after this webinar. Um, and then Alexis, the next one is, uh, what's the best way to steward? Is it too late? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it is never too late to steward donors. One of my favorite, one of my favorite things to say is that this year's stewardship is next year's cultivation. It's never too late to start. And we'll talk a little bit about how year end across any gift level and or gift source um, is an opportunity to elevate stewardship. So you'll see, I think you'll see some of those um, opportunities emerge as we as we discuss. Um, through our presentation today. But ultimately, I like to look at it, and it depends on the size of your shop, but I like to look at it by, by the source of giving, corporate, foundation, individuals. I like to think about it. Are, they, are we looking at um, our highest level donors, and we're, we're looking to make sure they've received adequate thank you, that they understand the impact they had this year? And uh, do, do our, do our donor, does our donor base feel appreciated and validated and connected with the organization before year end? And if you're starting today, if you're starting in a month, if you started six months ago and planning for year end, um, there are multiple ways to manage those touch points. Whether it, and, and do so by follow the, um, follow the information you have, right, Mary? Like if they yeah. told you how they prefer to receive communications, honor that. They'll be tracking, they'll be paying attention. So you don't have to overthink this part of it as long as you are actively seeking opportunities to steward. That's right, that's right. It's never too late to say thank you and engage. So, okay, to dive into timeline creation, this could take many forms. Um, but what you really want to do is you want to make sure that you are identifying key uh, markers in your calendar, whether you're starting from October 1st through uh, January 3rd, um, 
January 31st or December 31st is obviously our year end actual, but we know there are steps we need to take usually immediately after. Um, we also want to make sure that you have uh, so you're identifying those deadlines, like when does something have to be at the mail house in order to mail on time and working backwards. But we also want to just think a little bit more holistically. So number one, when you're thinking about your year end process timeline, whether you're brand new at an organization um, and you're looking back in historic files or you have been with your organization for several years, be sure to review last year. Um, be, be sure to review and if you can multiple years uh, without making yourself crazy. We wanna be sure that we are looking at and identifying and being honest with ourselves on where the past year experienced challenges, successes, or their barriers to our timeline. Um, all of that is a learning. All of those findings inform this year's plan. So definitely look at what has gone well and what did not go well so that you're making sure that you can improve upon and strengthen your process when you map out this year's timeline. The second key piece is to make sure that you're comprehensive as, as much as possible. So as you develop your timeline, consider um, and include appeals across all channels and milestones that lead to those respective mail and or launch dates. So for example, are you, are you gonna manage multiple phases of a mailing? Are you doing one phase, meaning one mailing? Are you gonna do two, maybe three? When do you want those mailings to hit households? in order to maximize the impact and increase responses. Will you do a small follow-up to best prospect non-responders in January? Will you have, do you have members and subscribers? And are they a core audience? What's the call to action gonna be for them and when, when's the optimal time to reach their households? Are you going to manage an email campaign? Are you gonna publish your annual or impact report in print or online or, or both? When does your honor roll and recognition listing need to be reviewed. What special events, webinars, tours, programs are you all going to host? What other engagement opportunities are out there? Do you have room to be responsive if senior leaders bring an idea on you? Where does Giving Tuesday fall in? And at what scale? And this is one we can take a moment maybe and just chat about because Giving Tuesday is, you know, it's a hot thing. So, for some organizations, Giving Tuesday is a very appropriate platform for a concentrated effort to raise critical funds. For others, it's more of a marketing strategy. So you're seen competitively on Giving Tuesday along with all the other organizations. We welcome and embrace both, but we, we would recommend that you think honestly about how much time it can take to manage a Giving, a giving Tuesday campaign against the ROI for your organization. And we also want to, for your consideration, we want to recommend using Giving Tuesday as a touch point. You can segment Giving Tuesday. So you can have a wonderful marketing strategy that, that hits households, um, across your donor base for a large swath of your constituency, but you can also segment and use it as a strategic touch point or uh, as a follow-up if you've already put a year-end appeal mailing out, for example, or you've already been managing an email campaign. And you can use Giving Tuesday as a, a stewardship touch point, um, recognizing, that, and recognizing and thanking your donors. So for example, Perhaps you've, you've created and mailed and or multi-channel launched your year-end appeal process, so it's hitting your constituency base in mid-November. Giving Tuesday could then create a secondary call to action to engage in um, those who are fulfilling your mission on the ground. It, the call to action does not have to necessarily be transactional though we think of it as a fundraising campaign. Now, I'm going to pause there for a moment. Mary, I know you have thoughts on Giving Tuesday. <laughs> I do. I see. I just put it in the chat because I'm curious about all of the people that are out there and what, how important is Giving Tuesday? So I, I, I mean, Alexis, we, we had a lengthy chat about this yesterday. We, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's more of marketing than it is, oh, Emily, okay, um, than it can be for, Oh, hi, Leslie. Good to hear. Good to see your chat. Good to see your name. Um, we, we look at um, 
I, we have a lot of organizations that Giving Tuesday is essentially their fundraising strategy. Whereas Alpha Group, we think of it more as like one element in the entire journey um, of, of year end. And so we don't, you don't want to can't, I mean, essentially you don't want to cannibalize your year end donors for bigger asks than, uh, than just to, because I think the average gift on Giving Tuesday, which is, which is usually all online is something like, you know, $20 or something. Ooh, Shauna does a match. Um, I think that's great. Very smart. Very yeah. smart. It's, it's nice to see there's a wide range of responses to how Giving Tuesday impacts. What I want to just acknowledge is Giving Tuesday, though it, though it may be critical or it may be a moment within your timeline, it's a, it is a piece of a whole year-end strategy. And so it's just really important that you map out the entirety. So all appeals across all channels, your mail, launch dates, content, narrative deadlines, goals per appeal, along with your stewardship touch points, those planned those, and those anticipated. Um, and this will bring you to a place where you're able to implement and pivot smoothly in order to maximize all these opportunities. Um, it'll also help you organize and stay on top of um, how you are coordinating internal and external partnerships, volunteers, and leaders. And just be strategic and graceful in our use of their time, specifically our volunteers, um, because they're really participating in our ability to achieve our results. So Mary, I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay. Okay, so gift entry. We, we know that the volume is gonna come, it's gonna, it's gonna uptick, which is again, best problem ever. So we're gonna see more online gifts that need to be, uh, processed, we're going to see gifts in the mail, you're, you know, if you're doing text to give or mobile calls or anything like that, these are all things that need to occur. So the first thing we want to do is let's make sure our mail actually gets to our donors. Um, so if you have Razor's Edge, which I know 33% do, um, so run address finder, if you can, before the end of the year, like, let's just get all of our addresses up to snuff. If you don't have Razor's Edge, you can work with your mail vendor to make sure uh, they, they'll run it against the um, United States Postal Service change of address, and you can just make sure everything is going to get into mailboxes because people can't give if if you know if you can't get them the mail. Uh, you also want to nest all of your campaigns, funds, and appeals. So instead of building these like in the throes of year end, like oh I need this new appeal and I need I need this campaign built, like build it now. Um, which is really a, that's being kind to your future self <laughs> because your future self is going to have a stack of gifts like this and you have to hurry up and get them in so you can get your acknowledgements out. So go ahead and build all your coding now. And then lastly, we, we highly recommend that everybody who gets an appeal, that that appeal is recorded on the record. And that way we can see response rates, um, and you can you can see what worked in your year-end efforts and then what didn't work. And then you can really hone in on your strategy based on what people are responding to and what people aren't. So acknowledgements, this is another exercise in being kind to your future self. Um, so today, I mean, this week, I would look at all your acknowledgements, like, are they, are they geared toward year end? Um, do you have one ready to go if somebody makes a second gift in, you know, uh, during year end? Are they just going to get the same acknowledgement letter? Or will you have another one teed up? I mean, really looking at your language um, and using the database. The database is your friend. So use that database to generate your letters. Now, I know earlier this year, our, our BlackBot friends out there, that BlackBot and Microsoft broke up. And so you can't really like uh, generate your acknowledgement letters from BlackBot. But if you're having trouble like getting acknowledgements out of the system and things, figure all those systems out now. So you don't have to do it when you're, you know, behind on gifts and all that good stuff. Also, if you have volunteers that help you, you know, stuff, um, stuff mailings, this could be the appeal that's going out. Or if you just have a mountain of acknowledgements to send out, you know, now's the time to get on your volunteers um, schedule because they, you know, they have family obligations and they have they're busy too in the holidays. So now's the time to really 
think about who you want um, to help you and see if they're available. And then I know Alexis mentioned this earlier, get your supplies. Um, we haven't really talked about it, but there is an envelope shortage. Um, there's supply chain issues this year. Order your envelopes now <laughs> because the, the what you don't want to do is like get everything ready and then you go to mail and nobody has envelopes. So with the supply chain issues, you might want to go ahead and uh, put your order in. Okay, measuring. Measuring your results are really critical for year end. So you, you don't have to wait until gifts start coming in to build your reports. You can build them now, and then they're just sitting there ready to be run. Um, so set up your queries and your reports before your volume ticks up. Uh, you also wanna figure out your report cadence. For example, I, I always sent reports on Mondays, like, okay, these are all the gifts from last week. And then people have the week to respond to that. Um, I never would send on Friday because Fridays are crazy. And then like the whole weekend goes by and then that's a few more days maybe till you can get your thank you call in. And so, you know, you wanna figure out your report cadence, communicate it and then stick to it. And then for all my database admins out there, uh, you know, be proactive. You, you don't have to wait until someone asks you for a live bunt or side bunt. Um, so that's people who have given last year, but not this year. On December 1st, I would always pull for all my fundraisers, their portfolios who haven't given this year, um, anybody for annual giving that gave, you know, 250 or more last year, but haven't given this year. Um, I mean, really looking at how can we maximize this year and, and really give everybody the opportunity to give. Um, I know I just had a call with a client this morning and we were talking about not making decisions on behalf of our donors. Like if they've already given this year, it's, you know, if they gave in at a spring event, it's okay to send them a year in mailing. Um, we, we don't want to make decisions. We want to give everybody the opportunity to engage how they want to engage. Um, and that client's on this call to Alexis, which is kind of fun. Um, oh, that is okay. so fun. I was <laughs> nodding furiously. I was like, yes. <laughs> I saw it. Send that it. second ask. <laughs> um, and then in, here in this yellow circle, um, you know, when you're really building out your appeal performances, um, you know, your, your annual giving team, I mean, if they're, if they're, if they're conscious, they're going to be at, for data admins, they're going to be at your door saying, how many gifts have come in and how, how many to certain appeals and what's our average gift and our response rate and who's upgrading and downgrading. So all of these reports can be built um, now before uh, you get bombarded with gifts. Okay, so we want to bring us back. We've made this point a couple times. This ties back to our timeline and plan um, and our ability to execute this plan. Be sure, based on past year's timelines, but keeping in mind those supply chain and other current day challenges that your timeline includes ample space so that you have what you need on time. Um, designing the necessary collateral and coordinating that collateral. Um, are you sending printed appeals on letterhead? Are you creating custom letterhead with a detachable form? Are you sending a trifold? Do you have a holiday membership appeal? Do you have direct response, direct mail vendors who are managing your appeals? Are they printing materials on site? And what is their lead time in order to um, hit your deadlines? Does your website need a specific landing page and who is designing that? Are there special donation forms needed or appeal codes to create? Will your year-end newsletter feature special messaging um, that aligns with your year-end solicitation language? Are you drafting social media posts and strategies in advance? There's no reason not to draft those in advance in alignment with everything else. You can, of course, always change and add. Um, the holiday card. Is there a holiday card? I used to dread the holiday card. It's such a lovely thing, but it's so much staff time. 
So what does that look like this year? Is there a more creative, innovative way to manage this? Um, thinking through these components by design and function are gonna help identify the constituency segments who are on the receiving end, and that's gonna help inform the quantity and or ex execution timeline. And then prepare and order material and postage. I know this, we said it, but this one's important. Don't forget to stop up, stock up on basic letterhead and envelopes for your pledge reminders, tax receipts, and acknowledgements. Don't just think of it if you're doing a printed mailing appeal. Think of it for the whole office. What else do you need? If you're managing your pieces in-house, don't forget to build in the time it takes to merge and review your letters. Often we review letter by letter. We're personalizing. Maybe we're tweaking asks per person, just that takes time. You cannot do that well in a day. And another tip, this is a, don't make it harder than you need to. As appropriate, consider ordering enough supplies that are gonna see you through January. And potentially if it's the same stock that you use for renewals, or it's the same stock that you're utilizing for a spring appeal, perhaps you can order it all at once so that you just have it in hand. Now that goes for designing pieces too. If they're e, you know, if they're online or email, um, just thinking about that evergreen. Save yourself that space and time. Often we think we need to customize absolutely everything, and I don't necessarily think that the ROI always justifies that. So just you know, think about that in advance and, and weigh up whether it's needed. Um, finally, uh, I have already said how much I love planning. Um, it is really important that we not wait until December to ensure that you have staff coverage. Now we all, we may be in the in an office, we may be hybrid, we may be remote, but it's, it's the same. So just embrace, embrace that fluidity and, and acknowledge that um, you cannot wait until after the Thanksgiving holidays to figure this out. So first of all, if you are in an office um, at an organization that hires temps to support gift entry, gift processing, um, hire them now. <laughs> um, hire them now so that they're well within your processes when the volume hits. We want to make sure they've got the training and support they need and that you then have the confidence that gifts are being entered and coded correctly. It benefits everything Mary was discussing. Um, we also, we strongly believe that people should take time off over the holidays. All it takes is coordination asking your staff to map out their PTO in advance. I think this is such a silly thing to have to raise, but I'm raising it because we want your year end to be stress-free. And when it's stress-free, it's when you know that there is someone there. So do we have, um, do we have adequate coverage per day to manage gift processing acknowledgement runs? The signatures, acknowledgement signatures, it is really important that we keep a timely acknowledgement cycle, right? Um, we also want to make sure we have the people, our finance partners, our partners in finance are, are also adequately staffing. So you can be a really good collaborator by thinking about your development team staff uh, for processing and reporting and sharing that with finance and asking them to also share their year end plan. Um, you also want to make sure, do you need phone coverage? Do you need um, someone checking the mail? You know, Mary already noted she loves checking the mail. Do we have the people we need in place? And then for goodness sakes, please be sure your staff have the right template language for their out of offices and are directing clear, clearly directing um, people who email them and receive their out of office to the right point of contact depending upon the period of time. Mary, I, I don't know about you, but um, we would typically create in the development offices I supported, we would actually just create a November to December day by day staff plan. Um, and, and it was just, you know, who was taking what days, just so we always had two to three people. Um, if we were, a sh I've been at small shops too, one person was sufficient as long as everyone understood the processes, as long as everyone had those SOP, SOPs in hand um, and understood what to do during the duration of low coverage. Well, sadly, I didn't do that, but now I'm, I'm looking back and thinking I should have done that. <laughs> um, so that, that's a really good tip. I, I also want to say the, the holiday cards are a big deal. Um, I remember I used to work, I was the director of development for the Boys and Girls Clubs of King County in Seattle. And I, I would have like a thousand little holiday notes to sign. And I would start, I would, it would be like, oh, thanks for all you do for the Boys and Girls Clubs. And then like a couple hours later, it was like, thanks for all you do. And then by the end of the day, it was like, thanks, <laughs> because I just couldn't write anymore. Um, so start now. 
You can sign 10 letters a day or 10 note cards a day and send them out when the time is appropriate. Uh, we also have a, we have a question here, um, Alexis, uh, from Giselle. Uh, for, the, for the request of don on donation letters, is it better to include like a like a gift ladder or a scale, a scale of um, funds that the organization would like to receive, or is it better to not put an amount? Gosh, I don't. Is one better than the other, Mary? I think yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so if you do have a year end goal. Um, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with putting what your year end goal is because people feel like then they're part of a community. They're giving to this goal. Other people are going to come alongside them. I, I do, however, Giselle think, um, in every, in every remit, right? Like whether it's an online giving page or, um, like on the little, uh, buck slip that kind of comes back with the gift that you have to have the appropriate gift ladder. Like it's not a one size fits all. Like you don't want to send like $25, $35, $50 to all donors. You want to look at what they gave last year and then your mail, um, your mail house can help you merge in the right amounts for that. Oh, and thanks Zoe. I appreciate that. Yes, that, that, that true, that it, the smudge test, anything you can do to, to, um, to stop the smudge test is good. Okay, Alexis, just for time, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep us keeping on here. Okay, so year end. Year end is you know eight to ten weeks long, and you want to pay attention to how things are going. You want to produce a report, you want to look at it every week, not on Fridays, right? Because Friday and then you lose another two days. Look at it on Mondays or Tuesdays and look at how each of your appeals are doing. Um anticipate like our data admin, admins out there, anticipate what people are gonna need to make decisions. So um, just like the, like the little graphic says, if plan A didn't work, the alphabet has like 25 other letters. So you, even though you have this amazing plan, if something falls flat, you can course correct and it's okay to course correct. Um, so, so make sure to do that, but you only know to course correct if you're paying attention to how your appeals are doing. So these are the questions that we would urge you to ask yourself, like, are my efforts producing what I want? Do I need to produce an additional appeal to people who just have not reacted uh, to all the other appeals we've, at, we've sent out? Has every single one of my thousand dollar plus donors that gave last fiscal year, have they renewed their gift or do they need do they need a special solicitation do they need a call from a program expert like what needs to happen to warm them up and try to get that renewal and have i given my entire donor pool opportunities to participate in year end and so if you're if you're saying um, yes to all these things then and and you're producing your results great however if you're saying no, or maybe on one of these questions, it's okay to course correct. So I just wanna put that out there, very important. Okay, after year end, it's, it's critical to look at how things went. So in January, I would urge all, this, all the people, I mean, you can even invite our friends in finance, but invite everybody to come and sit down and have a discussion about um, how did year end go? Um, this, this, I mean, give people space. Like this was too much for me. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that we contacted our um, our donors enough. I mean, let let people really talk about how how things went because that post mortem is going to set you on a trajectory to plan a really solid twenty twenty three year end, because we know like 40% of revenue comes in in the last couple months. Also, you, oh, here we go. I also, but, <laughs> thank you, Alexis. I have a, um, uh, a small chart here. So this, this is how I like to look at year end. So what you're, what you see here is all the appeals and, you know, I, this is dummy data. I just made it up. Um, so you can see that, you know, there were two, a double drop here. 
um, that there was an e-newsletter that went out. There was an email on the second to last day. Of course, we did Giving Tuesday. You know, maybe your staff or your board is doing a phone-a-thon or a thank-a-thon, um, or you do a special any kind of special mailing here. But what you really want to look at, and, and in a side-by-side -side comparison here, is how many people gave, right? So, you know, this year-end first mailing, 256 people gave 4% of those that were asked. Well, the second mailing cost less, right? It cost half as much and brought in twice as much revenue. Um, so this should tell you about how to plan, like maybe double drops are definitely working for this organization. Um, if if the double drop isn't working for um, the organization, then you can try to find another outlet for people to give. But we're really looking at response rates. What's the hard cost? Uh, how much revenue did it bring? When we spent a dollar on this initiative, how many dollars did it bring us back? And then what's the median gift? So this just allows us to see, you know, what's doing, what's going well, what didn't go well. And I, I would urge you to un, unpack the content. So for example, if let, let's say you look, you work for a hospital foundation and you're, the first mailing went out was about, you know, programs for women and children. And maybe that didn't fare as well as the one that we talked about our, you know, cancer initiatives. So really, really look to see what is inspiring people to engage, to go to your website, to give, to write that check. It also, and this, I feel like my feelings about Giving Tuesdays come out in this slide, Alexis, because this is made up data, but I, I had to pick something that didn't do well. Um, so Giving Tuesday, so 16 people gave out of 1%. Um, it costs $350 to put it on. You might've done Facebook ads or something like that. Um, it only brought in $250. So we actually, for every dollar we spent, we actually lost 29 cents and the median gift was $30. This, by having data like this, this actually helps you um, plan, not only plan your next year, but to really articulate what's working. So for example, you might have a board member or a development committee member who has the best intentions in the world, but they might be pushing you to do a like something that's out of your comfort zone or that hasn't worked in the past or doesn't fit in with your larger strategy. Um, you can come back to the data and say, you know, we just haven't had good results and we're, we're gonna opt out of this. So this, this data allows you to have like a data-driven conversation about what's working and what's not working. And then of course, from there, it, it would be time to start planning again because 40% of your revenue is gonna come in the last eight to 10 weeks of the year. Okay, so I think that's a wrap for our, our, our content. We have seven minutes. Um, to answer any questions that you have, um, any thoughts. We want to hear your feelings, your musings, anything that you want to tell us. Plus, you have like two seasoned consultants here. You can ask us anything you'd like to ask us. Oh, Elizabeth. Um, yes, the slides will be available to those who joined the webinar today. In fact, even if, uh, so we'll, we'll email it out to people who attended and then who didn't attend, we'll make sure to get the slides to them as well. Okay, uh, we have another question. How is it that the second mailing in the double drop cost less, but was sent to more people? Well, <laughs> anonymous attendee, that <laughs> is a really good question. I, I made that data up, so it probably was just a, just a fluke. Um, but I love that you're paying attention to the date, to the numbers, I have to say. So good job. Um, okay, another, um, how we structure our, how do we structure a call to action for general operating support? Uh, okay, sorry. How should we structure a call is, to action? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think this is asking about bundling your asks. Oh, so I see. Both, okay. 
Right, so combining both your general operating your end ask with a call to action to also support the campaign. Oh yes, yes, the, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like a, like you don't have they don't have to be like this these two very separate things. Um, you can talk about both. You can you can you don't have to cannibalize and and all that good stuff. Um, okay, Gwen, would you base your ask letter for the most recent gift or the highest gift? In particular, if the donor has lapsed by more than a few years, Gwen. Good question. Um, I have thoughts, but Alexis, you go first. Well, Mary, yours will be a little bit more data data informed, I'm sure. I typically would pull folks who weren't obviously in uh, ask range out, and I'd review them one on one by one, and I would I would do a little art and science mix. So, right? So, is a is a an increase off of their highest gift appropriate, if not. Um, for those who lapsed for more than a few years, if they had a really engaged relationship, I might handle them separately. Otherwise, I would put them back probably within my general annual giving. I'd ask them for their, the, the, their um, to consider making a gift at their highest level possible, at their highest commitment level possible. And then on the form, put a pretty, uh, medium gift range. If they were formally $5,000 plus donors, that range might start at $250 up to $1,000. If they were a wonderful $150 donor, I might start that range at $25. So that's for me how I would have handled that, Mary. Yeah, and, and I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, if, they're, if they're really long lapsed, Gwen, I would, I would go with the most, the most recent if they're, if they're not so far lapsed, I mean, 24 months, I mean, time, people interpret time, pa the passing of time in so many different ways. I might go with a, a ladder that's between the recent gift and the highest gift and just let the donor respond to that. Um, let's see, um, uh, Bridget. Mary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. Go ahead and answer Bridget. And then we have a couple that are coming through the chat that I don't want to. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Bridget said, I'm happy to hear you mention a thankathon, which is, that's just like a crowd pleaser. That's a day maker for board members. Um, any creative ideas on getting the board and the staff to engage in person? I have a, I, one of the, um, I, this ties a little bit to um, content and, and how we manage our full suite of engagement opportunities for leadership and volunteers to lean in. Um, but there are some really creative platforms. If you have folks who don't want to come in person, look into things like Thank You. Um, they make um, they make uh, it really easy for volunteer leaders and board members and donors, um, uh, you know, your your volunteer stakeholders and your senior staff to record videos of themselves or record them in your space or record them, you know, record themselves on a volunteer day um, and then send those out as thank you notes. And um, this is a really fun way to get that personalized interaction um, and it gives them the buy-in as they've created the content. Uh, so it's just something to think through. It's not quite the same as a thank -a but not everyone is comfortable with thank -a Yeah, I, I mean, you don't wanna put your, um, oh, Taryn, thank you is the best. Yes. I, I mean, even if, if your board members can, you know, film a quick video, do a, a program expert, like, hey, I'm starting my day and this is this is what it looks like. Those are those are huge and they might be really short, but super meaningful. Absolutely. Um, OK, I, I know we have one minute, Alexis, so you you pick the question and, and we have to turn it over to our friend Lucinda, too. Did you see the question, um, I'm so sorry, did you see the question about, do you always want the donor's last gift to be on the giving tree or could you start with an increased gift if they are a current oh, donor? I would start with an increased. Me too. Yeah, Alexis, <laughs> high five. High five. Yeah. <laughs> high five to all of you. This was yes. so much fun. I wanna do a whole other hour. And I love Andy calling out that perhaps another follow-up might be the um, year-end content narrative layout ask ranges. That's maybe that's something we can work on, Lucinda. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. This is so fun. Thank you both. And thank you everyone for 
not only joining, but um, asking questions and answering and taking the polls and interacting. This was really, really great. And there's so much more we could talk about. Um, and so we do want to keep that conversation going. So I'm going to wrap us up for today because we are out of time. Um, we have additional webinars in our webinar series. So we have three more coming up. So if you found this helpful, um, please consider registering for the other three that we have. So you can see here, as Mary mentioned at the very beginning, on November 1st, we have one on strength-based messaging. Uh, on November 15th, demystifying cryptocurrency. So we'll be talking about everything crypto. And then on December 8th, capital cam uh, campaigns, how it works and why it's important. So um, to register, just go to this website, right? It's on our, it's the news and events page on our website, alford.com. And that will come out in the email as well. So this has been recorded. Uh, we will send the recording out in the email uh, along with uh, the slide deck. So you receive all of the, the materials from us today within the next 24 hours. Uh, we also have a survey. We would really love your feedback. So that will be in the email, but once we end here, you'll be prompted to complete the survey. It's really short. It's like four questions. We'd really appreciate it uh, so we can hear how we did and uh, what we can do for our next webinars. And then finally, if we didn't get a chance to answer your question or you just wanna keep the conversation going, which we do, please um, contact us. Here's our contact information. You can find us on social media. And then the best way to get a hold of us is info at alford.com. And someone will respond right away and we can route you to Alexis or route you to Mary or someone else, one of our consultants or experts to answer any questions that you have. So thank you all so much for joining. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Alexis. Of course. This um, concludes our session and uh, we're going to disconnect now, but I hope that everyone has a really great day and let us know if you have uh, questions that we can answer via email. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care.